So one thing we've been noting on this channel over the past few weeks is how Jill Biden is taking a larger and larger role within the public face of Joe Biden's presidential campaign. And this is being done for a clear reason. Joe Biden is showing obvious signs of cognitive decline or dementia or whatever you want to call it. And every time he's in front of the camera, you see glimpses of it. Sometimes a lot, sometimes a little, but you always see it. And so the calculation is whenever you can put Jill in front of the camera instead of Joe or maybe with Joe, you can absorb some of that pressure and make it a little less obvious for a potential voter that Joe Biden lacks the mental wherewithal to do the job he's campaigning for. That's the calculation. And that's why, especially since Joe Biden has become the presumptive nominee, especially since Super Tuesday, Jill's been on many, many interviews. She's been doing events independent of Joe Biden. And actually, later on this week, she's doing three virtual events aimed at Michigan voters on Wednesday. Some aimed at Detroit, some aimed at nurses, some aimed at the Congressional Black Caucus, but all being done by Jill Biden independent of Joe Biden. And what that shows is not only that Jill is getting involved in the campaign, but that she's taking up slots that would normally be done by Joe Biden. That's concerning. Again, I've noted this before. I don't want to say it over and over again, but there's nothing wrong with a prospective first lady being involved in a campaign. I think it's important because again, the president's key advisor is often their spouse. Right. You talk to your spouse about the things that matter, the challenges you go through. And so the more you know about a first lady, a first spouse, you get a sense for them. And I think that's something that the American voters might want to know, but they shouldn't be there as a crutch for the actual person running for president. Jill Biden isn't running for president. Joe Biden is. When Barack Obama ran for president and Michelle Obama was very accomplished and very capable, I don't recall her doing the same amount of events and being the same sort of crutch to Barack Obama as Jill Biden is to Joe Biden. And thinking internationally, I can't remember any case off the top of my head, at least, where a presidential or prime ministerial spouse was effectively a key cog in the public relations of a campaign. Often, once you become a head of state, your spouse plays a key role, but I can't think of an election, say in Canada, where the prime minister's wife or a prime ministerial candidate's wife or husband played a massive role in the campaign. It just doesn't happen. And I really do feel that Jill's doing this not because she's trailblazing a new role for first ladies. I don't think this is a big feminist cause. I think it's really about hiding Joe Biden. We've seen it all before. We've seen it how before the Tara Reid story, before this health crisis broke, they were hiding Joe Biden away. First, it was to try and just stop Bernie Sanders, that they didn't want to give Bernie any way back into the primary. And so they basically took the oxygen out of the room and felt that if they could just run the clock, Bernie would drop out. And it worked. But going into the general election, I don't think that strategy is going to work. And you saw all sorts of articles basically saying Biden's goal should be to hide away as much as possible. Biden basically just has to stay alive and he's going to be president. The Tara Reid story is bad for Biden for a lot of reasons, but one of them was that it actually forced him to do one more media appearance. It wasn't even just about the awful story. It was about the fact that it put Biden in front of the camera and Biden once again had one or two key moments that in addition to showing him looking like a liar made him look like somebody clearly dealing with cognitive decline and dementia. That's what we saw there. Jill Biden playing this role is to cover all of that up. And I don't know if it's working. I don't think it's working, but it's an attempt nonetheless. And I also think it's not a coincidence that this Tara Reid story is popping up and we're going to see more and more and more of Jill Biden because a common tactic when men in power face those sorts of claims by women is to get their wives involved, to get their wives involved to say that my husband is a good man, whether it's infidelity or whether it's more serious claims. 
by getting the wife involved, it's an implicit recognition. It's an implicit claim that because his wife is standing by him, because his wife is still campaigning for him, he must not actually be a bad guy because what kind of woman would stay with a bad guy? And whether or not people believe that, whether or not that's accurate, I think that's an attempt. So you can combine these two stories. Jill Biden is there as Joe Biden's crutch and frankly as a deflection tool to limit the you know exposure of Joe Biden. And she's also going to be playing a crucial role, as will Joe Biden's eventual female vice presidential running mate in covering for him whenever a Tara Reid style question comes up. This campaign is not over. A lot of people are saying that Joe Biden is going to cruise to victory, that the polling right now shows him in a strong position. It doesn't have him in a bad position, but it's not a guarantee. And new polling that just came out regarding the Tara Reid story shows that a quarter of Democrats and 40% of Democrats under 45 think Joe Biden should be replaced as the nominee because of that story. Now, you might say that's 75% of Democrats that are sticking to Joe loyally despite this story. But in a general election, if 25% of your party is willing to turf you after you've become the presumptive nominee, that puts you on a real, real back foot. It's not necessarily the end of days. It's not necessarily the case that those 25% of people won't vote for you if they can't replace you. Some of them might want you gone, but will ultimately vote for you if that option doesn't happen. But it shows that Joe Biden's in a lot of trouble. And it shows that despite all of these efforts to hide him away and get prominent women, including his wife, to try and absorb the Tara Reid story, that this is not getting better for Joe Biden.